Welcome back to The Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a war drama film called, April 9th. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with an exposition of what happened on the 9th of April, 1940. The German forces invaded Denmark, and the ill-equipped Danish forces have no other choice but to face the strongest army in Europe. A day before the battle takes place, we see 2nd Lieutenant Sand goes to the exercise area where soldiers are training. Then, we see three soldiers going to the same place, talking about their leave being cut short, but all they know is that it's about an alarm drill. The scene changes back to 2nd Lieutenant Sand arriving at the practice area where he greets the lieutenant. The two talk about the movements of the German soldiers near the border. It turns out that a train full of troops is seen heading north towards the border. Lieutenant Jepson tells 2nd Lieutenant Sand that they will support a motorcycle unit led by Sergeant Bungard. The two lieutenants are distracted by the arrival of the three soldiers when Sergeant Klostergaard scolds them for being late. After telling 2nd Lieutenant Sand the punishment for the late soldiers, Lieutenant Jepson continues the conversation. He thinks that the Germans are heading to Norway. Then, we see the soldiers training shooting, and one soldier named Private Lassen is bad at it. After practicing shooting, Sergeant Klostergaard orders the soldiers to move to the bicycle area and tasks them to change tires within two minutes. The lieutenants approach them and Lieutenant Jepson tells them to do it again but within 90 seconds. Afterward, the soldiers are taking a break and eating when a messenger arrives and informs the lieutenants of the new order from Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. They are ordered to abort exercise and retreat to barracks immediately. It is, then, revealed that a German column is marching towards the borders. However, in order to avoid panic, the lieutenant colonel orders them to still call it an exercise. As soon as the messenger leaves, the soldiers quickly follow and return to the barracks. At night, Sergeant Klostergaard gives out the order to the soldiers. They are ordered sleep in uniform and always get their arms ready. They are also reminded to keep wearing their dog tags. The soldiers are obviously nervous and suspect if the situation is still an exercise. Second Lieutenant Sand tells Lieutenant Jepson that the soldiers need to know the truth to which the lieutenant agrees, but they cannot go against the order. Afterward, we see Second Lieutenant Sand loads bullets in his gun after writing a letter for his family. Meanwhile, at the border, two soldiers from Checkpoint 3 hear an activity from a distance and immediately report it to the officials. A soldier informs the officials of the heavy activity of the Germans near them. The lieutenant colonel asks how many Germans they have spotted but the soldiers can only hear them. He, then, orders them to stand by and wait for the orders. Lieutenant Colonel Hintz, then, calls the head of Jutland Division immediately. He requests if they can form a defensive position on the border. Unfortunately, they decline the request, saying that any Danish mobilization will be taken as confrontational by the Germans. After the meeting, 2nd Lieutenant Sand calls Sergeant Klostergaard for a surprise inspection in their platoon's barracks. Meanwhile, the soldiers in the barracks do different activities. We see Private Noriskov writing a letter for his fiancée. On the other part of the barracks, Private Anderson and Private Lundgren are intimidating Private Lassen to give them half of his bullets. Private Anderson emphasizes that Private Lassen is bad at shooting and his bullets will be more useful in the hands of Private Lundgren. Private Lassen is about to give them the bullets when Private Graham stops him. Pissed, Private Anderson confronts Private Graham, calling him a German because his father is a German when another soldier named Private Justizen steps in. The soldiers are surprised and quickly fix themselves when 2nd Lieutenant Sand and Sergeant Klostergaard arrive. The sergeant starts scolding the soldiers that didn't wear their uniforms properly while 2nd Lieutenant Sand quietly looks at them. After the inspection, 2nd Lieutenant Sand takes out a cigarette when a soldier approaches and offers him a light. It's Sergeant Bungard of the motorcycle unit. The two discuss about the incoming battle, and 2nd Lieutenant Sand assures Sergeant Bungard that they will have their backs. Afterward, we see 2nd Lieutenant Sand with other officials talking about the Germans when a soldier notifies them of the happening in the radio room. The officials quickly go to the radio room. It turns out that the Germans already breached the border and Checkpoint 3 is under fire. The alarm goes off and all the soldiers prepare for battle. Meanwhile, 2nd Lieutenant Sand and Sergeant Bungard strategize how they will face the German forces. They plan to hold the highway until help from other units arrives for them to push back the Germans away. 
Afterward, 2nd Lieutenant San tells his platoon that Denmark is already at war and must fight well. Then, using their bicycles, they move out. It's already dawn when they hear gunshots from the distance. Later, they come across the motorcycle unit retreating after their first encounter with the Germans. Sergeant Bungard and his men were able to take down an armored vehicle and some German soldiers on foot but there are too many of them. Second Lieutenant Sand asks how many and Sergeant Bungard answers that they have one or two companies supported by armored vehicles. He also reveals that the highway has already fallen. After their conversation, the motorcycle unit heads to the north while the bicycle unit stays to do as they are ordered. With 20 minutes before the reinforcements arrive, the platoon is divided into three units led by Lieutenant Jepson, 2nd Lieutenant Sand, and Sergeant Klostergaard. Moving into their positions, 2nd Lieutenant Sand tells his unit to focus the machine gun on the armored vehicles and wait for the lieutenant's command before firing. After some time of waiting, the German forces arrive and with the lieutenant's order, Private Anderson who's handling the machine gun fires at the armored vehicles. Unfortunately, the bullets are just bouncing off the trucks, and the Germans shoot back. As soon as the German soldiers show themselves, the platoon takes them down. But they didn't expect that the soldiers will go for the machine gun and there are too many of them. Upon seeing that his unit and the two other units are struggling to fight off the Germans, 2nd Lieutenant Sand orders his men to retreat. Unfortunately, Private Anderson, Private Noriskov, and Private Kolding are too caught up in the shootout and they cannot just retreat. Private Anderson manages to take down an armored truck and Private Kolding is finishing the soldiers escaping, but he is shot by one of the armored vehicles. Private Noriskov immediately attends to him when 2nd Lieutenant Sand arrives at their position. Grabbing Private Kolding's dog tag, he escapes with his men through the woods to a farm. After hiding their bikes in a barn, the soldiers hide in the house. Peeking outside, the Germans didn't follow them. Then, 2nd Lieutenant Sand plans to continue going north to meet with the Lieutenant Colonel and wait for the new orders. He, then, assigns Private Graham as his second in command. Outside, 2nd Lieutenant Sand tells his men that out of the whole platoon, they are that is only left, and reminds them that the death of Private Colding is for the country. Then, the six remaining soldiers move out. As soon as they reach their destination, 2nd Lieutenant Sand approaches the Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel Hintz, then, asks what happened to which 2nd Lieutenant Sand answers that Lieutenant Jepson and Sergeant Klostergaard were either surrendered or captured along with the rest of the platoons while Sergeant Bungard and the motorcycle unit heads to the north to put up a defensive position. The Lieutenant Colonel, then, reveals to 2nd Lieutenant Sand that there will be no more reinforcements. He also tells him that the borders are already fallen and the units were either already retreated or surrendered to the Germans. Asking for a new order, Lt. Col. Hintz orders 2nd Lt. Sand to retreat to the Hatterslev and join the garrison. Afterward, 2nd Lt. Sand relays the order to his men and they immediately move out. Moving through the woods, a tire of one of the bikes gets flat and they stop to have it changed. While waiting for the others to finish fixing the bike, Private Graham tells 2nd Lt. Sand that Private Colding is a close friend of Private Noriskov. Then, 2nd Lt. Sand approaches Private Noriskov and reminds him that he is not alone. He also promises him that Private Noriskov will be home for his marriage. Meanwhile, Private Graham tells Private Anderson who's helping to fix the tire to finish it immediately. Pissed, he confronts Private Graham again and 2nd Lt. Sand stops them. The scene, then, changes to 2nd Lt. Sand and his men arriving in a town where many civilians are in the street. 2nd Lt. Sand asks Sergeant Bungard what is happening to which he answers that they were about to take their position but the civilians are all over the place. He, then, relays to the sergeant the new order, but Sergeant Bungard doesn't want to risk the lives of his men. 2nd Lt. Sand insists that they must follow orders. Meanwhile, Private Graham sees a civilian holding a flyer. Asking him about it, the civilians say it is dropped by a German plane. Showing the flyer to the 2nd Lt. They discover that it is an appeal to the Danish soldiers and people not to offer resistance to the Norwegians. Then, the civilians spot the Germans coming. The soldiers quickly help the civilians to get out of the place while a shootout is happening. Unfortunately, a kid is shot dead and his mother can't do anything as his dead body is left on the street. Meanwhile, the soldiers retreat as they are outnumbered and running out of ammo. Using a truck they found, they travel to Hatterslev. 
When they reach Hatterslev, they find the motorcycle unit outside the barricade, not allowed to enter the town. Second LT San talks to the captain and he insists that they cannot enter as per the colonel's order. But when Second Lieutenant San tells the captain that they lost a comrade because they didn't come as reinforcements, he lets them enter. Then, they go directly to Colonel Hans. Colonel Hans apologizes for not backing them up earlier, explaining that they are ordered to defend the town. Second Lieutenant Sand, then, shows the flyer to Colonel Hans and he already knows about it but did not care. Second Lieutenant Sand emphasizes that they are no match for the Germans but Colonel Hans insists that an order is an order and they must follow it. He, then, orders his soldier to take Second Lieutenant Sand and his men to the North Road where they will help defend against the Germans. With no other choice, Second Lieutenant Sand tells his men to gather ammos and prepare for battle. Hearing gunshots from the distance, they hurriedly go to their assigned position. Second Lieutenant Sand leads his men to defend the North Road but they are quickly overwhelmed with the numbers of German soldiers. The tension rises even more when a panzer tank driven by German soldiers shows up and starts shooting at them. Second Lieutenant Sand, then, orders his men to retreat but they are too caught up in the shootout that even taking a cover is a challenge for them. Giving orders to different groups, Second Lieutenant Sand does his best to get his soldiers alive. Unfortunately, Private Justizen is shot when he is retreating. Ordering Private Graham to cover for them, Second Lieutenant Sand and Private Lassen takes Private Justizen to safety. With the German soldiers nearing their location, his men running out of ammo, and Private Justizen dying, Second Lieutenant Sand decides to surrender to the enemies. Ordering his men to put their weapons down, he asks Private Graham how to say, Don, shoot, we surrender, in German. Afterward, we see them captured. Putting out the pack of cigarettes that Sergeant Bundgaard gave earlier, Second Lieutenant Sand shares the pack with his men and they all smoke together. Unfortunately, Private Justizen died. They are taken by the Germans and before riding the bus, a German official named Lieutenant Becker talks to Second Lieutenant Sand with Private Graham translating for both of them. Lieutenant Becker asks why Second Lieutenant Sand keeps on fighting when their government already surrendered to the Germans. Surprised by what he hears, Second Lieutenant Sand decides to ride the bus with his men rather than riding Lieutenant Becker's car back to the barracks. On the bus, no one is speaking, but grief and exhaustion is seen on their faces while Private Graham is crying. Meanwhile, Second Lieutenant Sand is still shocked and frustrated upon learning the truth too late. As they travel, they see children playing in a German armored vehicle. The movie ends with an interview of the real people that participated in the war in Denmark on the 9th of April, 1940. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.